Okay. So the theme of my talk is the hero in me and I say selfishness is a virtue. Do you agree? I say be selfish. Would you agree with that? Thinking about your own benefits, right? So the dictionary nowadays has basically kind of reduced the word to being self-centered or thinking about one's own interest and that is very important. But that's not what the word really means, right? So what's this chap talking about? How can selfishness be a virtue, right? Because in the common day parlance, I mean in today's parlance, selfish is supposed to be people who are self-centered, people who are only thinking about themselves mm -hmm. and not about others, right? Okay. There was a book by Ayn Rand which was called The Virtue of Selfishness, right? And I am not here to talk about Ayn Rand's concept of selfishness because Ayn Rand, though some of her theories were right, she basically tried to use the theories and wrote in a book that selfishness is good because she was trying to, trying to kind of, you know, support the capitalist movement, movement, movement where she said that, you know, capitalism is good and holding wealth is good. I don't agree with that because I don't think too much lust for power or lust for too much wealth is good. Not at the cost of, you know, marginalizing others. So it's not Ayn Rand's, uh, Ayn Rand's uh, va value. So Ayn Rand argued that why does one even need a morality? The purpose of morality should be to teach you not to live for others but to enjoy yourself and live. So I'm surely not agreeing with this because this is not my concept of selfishness, right? She argued further and rejected the altruistic doctrines of rights to health care, employment, etc. to further her political philosophy of selfishness, where a few people who knew how to subvert the system for, to further their own greedy interests could amass and use up more and more at the cost of marginalizing other human beings. This is not the concept of the virtue of selfishness. And though some of her theories were right, she actually set the ground for the capitalistic movement, which has been purely about hoarding wealth amassing wealth, amassing power at the cost of marginalizing others. You can see it all around you today. Several companies talk about CSR, they talk about feeding a thousand children and yet they go out there and they kind of marginalize millions of children with bad policy by grabbing their land and so on. I won't name those companies here for being ethically correct, right? But you can see people who are now being featured on media who are absolutely doing wrong with all their corrupt ways. You know, even kind of stealing food from people, from children who are being given substandard food, which I always say that I wouldn't even give my stray dogs to eat, right? This is the, the, the truth of midday meals in India. Most of the midday meals being served in government schools are not fit for my stray dogs to eat, right? Because there's a huge scam happening over there. I call it the two rupees 60 paisa scam. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is because it's very important for the youth to know the truth of what's happening in the country today. Failing which we'll end up thinking that the country is really shining while it is not. You know, if any one child is dying of hunger, the country cannot be shining. And we don't have one child dying of hunger in this country. We have millions of children dying of hunger in this country. So that is the truth. So I'm going to tell you a little about what I mean by selfishness. So I say, what is the real concept of selfishness? Yeah. There is enough, this is what Gandhi said, there is enough and more for everyone's need, but just not enough for anyone's greed. And I think this is where the world has gone wrong today because a few people, because of their greed and their lust for power, are amassing all that power and wealth, and a lot of people are being marginalized, right? There are more than two billion people who are really hungry in the world today. When I say hungry, they don't even get one meal properly, right? Forget three square meals, they don't even get one meal properly, so that's the truth of the world, not just of our country. So why is it as a virtue? It's about being selfish, not foolish. It's about being selfish, not gluttish. Gluttish is a word which I have coined from the word gluttony, which basically means to consume more than required, which basically means to hoard more than required. And that is not what the concept of selfishness is, right? Be selfish, be a giver. That's my concept. Be selfish, be the change. Now, why do I say this, right? Because, like you truly said, when you give respect, right, you get respect. So there is a selfishness involved in that, right? So what is my concept of selfish? If you go into the true meaning of the word, self is about I, self is about me. Ish is a word which is a, which is a suffix, which is used to kind of say that try to be like this, right? So self and ish, when they come together, it's about the self being so inspiring that you enable and inspire others to be like you. That's what I mean by selfish, right? 
people use the words right that 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 person is so girlish right that person is so boyish things like that so ish basically is like that person so can i be so inspiring with my work with the way i live my life that others want to emulate that that is my concept of selfishness be selfish be the change right do you are, are you connecting with me now right and i'll tell you stories now of real heroes who are making a huge difference in the world these are not heroes that you see on television shows or on mo or in movies or even on the cricket field these are heroes who are very very ordinary people most of them have not even had the opportunity to go to school and college like you some of them have not even stepped in a school ever but they are making a big difference in our world today simply with their concept of doing something to be the change right they are actually following the principles which were spoken about by gandhi ji not just talking about it or reading about it from the textbooks and that's what i mean by be selfish so when we give respect when we give trust when we give love when we give dignity when we give courage when we value people people will value us also right so that's selfish because everyone has that need to be valued be respected be trusted so if i want to be trusted respected and loved i need to give respect give trust and give love i can't just get it now a lot of people think that they can buy or they can command respect and trust they think that way but that is not true because you can't ever command or buy respect and trust you can only earn it you can only inspire it. they forget that so a lot of people may have a lot of money and a lot of power but i promise you they are not respected or trusted think about it a lot of names will flash through your mind as i say this right so how does this work this is my purpose this is something which i wrote when i was 17 years old while working in the streets of a place called kamatipura right i was like any other youth we were discussing earlier very confused with my life i lost my father when i was 8 years old and i was pretty much escaping from life because i was a rebel without a cause and a rebel without a pause also i rebelled on everything without a cause right and i was pretty much escaping from life because i lost my father my mother got married again i was trying to cope a lot with things which were happening within me and i thought the world is such a depressing dirty place right and that made me escape from life i used to wonder why i don't have nike shoes while my schoolmates had nike shoes looking back in life i feel that all that was such a waste of time because i played as good basketball or football as them with my power shoes have you ever heard of a brand called power power shoes 99 rupees 95 paisa the shoes used to cost at that time right and then something happened to me because you know for four months of my life after joining college i i went from a all boys school to a coed school in college for the first time in my life girls happened and i started meeting a different species of human beings right and uh, when 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 you meet people when you meet new friends you know things change for you right when you get some adulation on the basketball or the football court it does go to your head right and when friends tell you let's try out new things you want to not be left behind because otherwise they'll say that you're not a macho guy right so a lot of my friends told me let's do something called pot and i did something called pot for some time for four months of my life blissful ignorance right looking back i feel that it was a learning but i need not have done that at all and then i saw my friends going on to bigger things like heroin right and i said if i do this i will waste all the efforts of my mother who's worked very hard to give me a good life to give me a good education because she's worked very hard she's educated me with her own efforts not with my stepfather's money right so thank god for that little wisdom which i had and i decided to give up everything overnight and started looking for a job and i took up my first job with a with a newspaper called indian express at the age of 16 and that made all the difference in my life i learned learned a lot about advertising and marketing and i started my first enterprise at the age of 17 which i built for 10 years and then sold out to a company called the interpublic group but i was very high on energy right and i said if i don't channel my energy in the right direction it may go waste and i may end up like my friends because a lot of my friends have had gone on to the path of heroin they have become absolute wasters so that was a little choice that i made in my life which helped me began because of which i'm standing here today So because of the high energy I decided to work in a place called Kamatipura. Kamatipura is a so called red light area or a sex work district, right? And I always joke I say I associate red lights with two communities. One is the sex workers, the other is the VIPs. I don't respect the latter. I respect the former. 
I respect the sex workers because for me they are not bad women or dirty women. They are mothers because they do a lot of hard work to feed their children who otherwise will die of hunger, right? And that gave me a completely different perspective of my life. And I'm so grateful because all my learning that really happened was not in college or in school, but in the streets of Kamatipura while working with the children over there, playing Gilly Danda over there, where I learned the path of life. Because I said, what was I complaining about all these years when these children have it worse off than me? And that became the revelation. And that's when I wrote a small mission statement that create a legacy of a better world for future generations. Can you see it over there? This is what I wrote when I was 17 years old. And at that time itself, the mindset was very clear that this is nothing altruistic or selfish. This is, sorry, no, nothing altruistic or selfless. This is selfish because I live in the same world where I will be married tomorrow and I will have my own children. My brothers will have their own children. My sisters will have their own children. So if I am creating a better world, it also benefits me. So it was selfish. It was not selfless. I sometimes get challenged when I see a lot of people talk to me, especially I do a lot of work in the NGO sectors. You must have seen the word ICONGO, which is the International Confederation of NGOs. And when people tell me we are doing selfless work, I say, yeah, really, think again. Don't give me that nonsense. Nobody's doing selfless work over here. We are all doing it because we also have children who live in the same world. And if we are not doing something to create a safer world for our children, we have nothing to complain about because we are responsible for that unsafe dangerous world, right? So that's what I mean. So we, we work with people to enable them to discover the hero, leader, teacher, volunteer, and champion of change within them, because I don't think I can change the world alone. But can I make other people realize that they also have the potential to do something to make a difference in the world? All of us cannot do everything. None of us can do everything. But we all can do something to make the difference. And that's the basic idea of the right every wrong movement and the joy. So I started the joy of giving movement in 2003. It's become a big movement in India now. It's also being emulated in the US and Europe. Now look at the joy of giving itself. When we give, we experience joy. It's selfish. And I promise you, not all the money in the world can buy you that joy. It's called gratification. Now most people don't understand gratification because they're never feeling grateful for what they have and losing their today in anticipation of tomorrow for what they don't have. Right? So again, selfishness works well for individuals because when you're selfish, you want to do something which benefits the greater good, right? We also started a movement called Right Every Wrong because I feel that if each of us right a wrong in our own space and time, then the world, in the world, together as one, we can right every wrong. So it's again selfish. How can we inspire others that let's make the world a better place for your children, for my children, for all children, right? Right? Because what the Native Americans said, we do not inherit the world from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. So the responsibility and the burden of responsibility is huge on every individual to do something with their life, to do something for creating a better world, right? Okay? We also do something called the Kar Karmavir Puraskar. And, uh, you know, that is where we basically award people who are making a difference in the world. These are not very... Uh, just very eminent people or people with high stature. These are very, very ordinary people, which include slum dwellers and sex workers. We started a movement to clean India around to 12 years ago when we started Joy of Giving. And I remember I should take students. I do a course called Ethical Leadership in B schools and colleges. And I used to request students to come out with me to clean the streets. Now, there were no brownie points or certificates given for this, right? because we would just tell students to do it because it's a part of their fundamental duty as citizens. Most, most citizens in this country don't know their rights properly and they don't even know that fundamental duties exist, right? Now, one st a lot of students would resist this because they didn't want to do it. And I remember one student in a college, in a B-school in Hyderabad, came up to me and he said, sir, I won't do this. And I wrote this in my book, Karma Kari, because I said, why? Why won't you do this? He said, I don't feel like doing it because I'm an intellectual. I said, okay, very nice, no problem, don't do it. Yeah? But I said, if you don't clean your country, if you don't clean your house, who will? Right? Mm -hmm. And then he said something to me. He said, sir, I'm meant for better things because I'm an intellectual. I said, you're absolutely right. So don't you know, blame the country for what is going wrong because you're equally to blame. And then I couldn't help myself because the dean was also standing there with, the, with a broom in his hand. Dean Rao, his name was. Yeah? And I said, look at Dean Rao. Dean Rao has a broom in his hand. He's going to clean the streets with us. How do you feel that you're studying and you're learning from a non-intellectual while you're an intellectual? And one hour later, this young boy came and joined us to clean the streets. Now, we've been doing this for years, and I do a little work with Manohar Parikar, who was the CM of Goa, 
and is now the defense minister. So I said, how can we make this a movement, right? Mm -hmm. And we influenced PM Modi through Manohar Parikar and other people in BJP to say, let's kind of create the Swachh Bharat mission. And we call it Kira Hai Kya Desh Saaf Karne Ka. If we don't have that Kira to do something, don't blame others because you're equally responsible for the state of the state, okay? So this is what, over the years, this is various schools and colleges we've been doing it. And nothing selfless about this. It's selfish because I want a clean world and I want a clean India for myself and for my children and for everybody over here. Yeah, this is what we've been doing in schools. That's Gul Panag doing it. And after Mr. Modi made it mandatory for all the ministers and the bureaucrats to do it, my first uh, thought was that Manohar Parikar should actually challenge people like Sushma Swaraj, Arun Jaitley. And I said, because you know, these guys can't even fathom or visualize themselves with brooms in their hands because of the ego. And rightly so, Arun Jaitley checked himself into a hospital on the day of Swachh Bharat mission on 2nd October because he doesn't want to do it, right? <laughs> so don't mind me. Like I said, I'll tell the truth, right? But after that, after we got uh, Prime Minister Modi to make it mandatory, we got the first captain of industry, Karan Paul. Karan, that's Karan Paul over there. Karan Paul is the chairman of the APJ Surindra Group, which is a big company. It's a big industrial group, right? And he came out on the streets to clean the streets along with people like uh, Anurag Batra. Anurag Batra is a publisher of Exchange for Media and uh, the publisher of Business World. And there's Karan's wife over there, supermodel Indrani Das Gupta. So cleaning the streets, my friend, is cool. It's selfish. So be selfish, be the change, right? This is the Karmavir Puraskar. And basically, if you want a better world, we need to all get involved. And I say it's not about giving a little money to charity. I don't like the word charity. charity. It's mindless and arrogant. I like social justice. And in a nutshell, social justice means fairness. There has to be fairness for one and all, for 1.3 billion Indians in this country, right? But that fairness is only there in our textbooks, in our constitution. It's not seen in day-to-day -day life. Because most people in India, their only concept of fairness today is fair and lovely and fair and handsome. Not fairness as an equality and equity for everyone, right? And nowadays, you have fair armpits also. Yeah? So that should not be the concept of fairness. Fairness is social justice, equal justice for one and all. Right? So we're glad to kind of invite nominations. If there are any students who are doing great work, volunteering work, please write to us. And we will be glad to kind of nominate you for the Karmavir Chakra Awards that we've instituted with the UN. We are also creating collaborative awards with schools, colleges, because we want to find heroes in all spaces. My basic idea is let's democratize heroism. So I see selfishness in that again. Because when there are more heroes in the world, the world will become a better place. So I'll play a small film for you, just to show you some heroes who are changing the world every day. These are some of our Karmavir Puraskar awardees, like Rashmi Anand, who's going to speak later. Rashmi has had her own personal challenges and a lot of adversity in her life. I have the privilege of knowing her, and uh, you know, I met her for the first time last year, or earlier this year, when she was awarded the Karmavir Puraskar uh, and um, the award. But despite all the adversity in her life, she has decided to find meaning in that adversity also. And she's using that adversity now to figure out how could she make a difference in the lives of others. And would you agree with me, Rashmi, that there's something selfish about that? Absolutely, yeah? So be selfish, be the change. Let me show you a film. Let's play the film, please. Am I on time? Yeah.
Yeah? Yeah, but I don't think they're ordinary at all because they're doing extraordinary work. Most of them have never gone to school, right? You've seen there, Lakshman Singh has converted over 300 villages from wastelands into wetlands. Because of him, over 300,000 people have livelihood. I don't think any CEO in the world can claim that. That's the power of one. Lakshman Singh has never stepped in school. Agricultural scientists and environmental engineers come to learn from Lakshman Singh in a small Jopada in Lapodia today, right? The power of one. So Bashri Mistri, never gone to school, an entrepreneur who became an entrepreneur at the age of 43, not by design, by default, because she lost her husband to a small ailment called gastroenteritis. So she works for 20 years in people's homes, cleaning utensils, scrubbing floors, with one purpose in mind, that I will build a hospital so that nobody else dies of gastroenteritis. Today she has built a huge hospital called Hope Hospital. The same woman who used to clean utensils and scrub floors in people's homes, what you and I call as Kamwali Bai, right? So that's the power of one again, Subhashini Mistri. These are the stories I like to tell. These are people who are changing India and changing the world, right? You've seen Tulsi Munda from a completely backward tribe has educated over 30,000 children. Father George Pulikthayal and his community filed cases against people in government, against powerful people in corporates, and win the cases without paying a single naya paisa bribe in the same country where most Supreme Court lawyers will tell you that you can't do anything with judiciary till you grease their palms. These are real heroes. These are people who are changing the world every single day. And Chuang Norfil, who builds artificial glaciers by you know, collecting uh, glacial men. These are some of the heroes who are featured in my book, Karma Kari, which has now become a bestseller, and we have signed on a contract for another 10 books. So we like telling stories of real heroes. And I hope that all of you understand that you know if they can do it, you can do it too. So be selfish, be the change. Thank you so much.